Nigeria has a cash problem. I mean, it's the richest country in Africa with a nominal GDP of over $400 billion. But when it comes to making transactions, most locals pay with cash. In fact, only about 35% of Nigerians even have a bank account. And with a population of over 200 million people, that's a lot of paper floating around. And excess cash can lead to increased crime, corruption, and a difficulty for some Nigerians to accrue credit and obtain loans. So, a tech entrepreneur named Tayo Oviosu came up with an idea to change the way Nigerians think about money, which quickly set him on a path to becoming one of the country's biggest rising stars of fintech. I was born in Lagos, Nigeria, in West Africa. Growing up here, you know, really was fantastic for me. I uh, learned a lot in terms of just grit and learning to handle a variety of issues that you face every day where not all the infrastructure works smoothly. I was raised by a single parent. My mom um, raised five kids um, and I was the last of five boys. I got to see firsthand at a very young age how she was putting in so much to make ends meet for all of us and the sacrifices that she was making. Inspired by his mother's work ethic and emphasis on education, Oviosu moved to the United States for his undergrad degree at the age of 16. He majored in electrical engineering at USC and later received a master's at Stanford's Graduate School of Business. Well, while I was at Stanford, one of the things that really we got questioned on is, you know, what really matters to you, right? And why? What is it that you really want to do? I narrowed it down to, I want to help bring ideas to life. First and foremost on the African continent, but just generally speaking. After working for a few tech companies in America, Oviosu headed back to Lagos on a search to find an idea he could bring to life. And it didn't take long before he found one. So if you look at emerging markets, about 95% of transactions are done in cash. And this is very unsafe. Merchants who are selling have to create a variety of processes within their stores to prevent pilferage from their staff. When you're traveling with a lot of cash, you can face theft. And then for the economies, it costs somewhere between 5 to 7% of GDP to clean, process all of that cash. In Nigeria and in really most emerging markets, the reason why cash is still king is first and foremost, poor banking infrastructure. So while Nigeria has 23 banks, they only combined have about 5,000 bank branches. So they don't have the reach to the mass market. So it's not that people don't save, they just do so through very informal means. If you go to someone who is selling in a, in a market, they are saving at what's called a savings collector. So the savings collector is someone who basically allows you to save money on a daily basis with them. Sometimes you don't even get any interest on your money. When people do this and people save also underneath their mattress and the house and different places, they, they, they put money. And so for me, looking at that, I was like, wow, this is a huge problem. There's got to be a better way to pay than me having to pay in cash. But Oviosu noticed something else. I have a phone and I have a phone signal. And in fact, I have multiple phones, right? Because most Nigerians carry two to three phones. And if I don't have a phone signal on one network, I have a phone signal on another network. So why can't I pay with my phone? And that's really what got me going, right? Um, and then I soon quickly realized that the problem I had was actually worse for most people. I was banked with two banks, but most people were not even banked at all. So 61% of Nigerians are not banked. So I was like, wow, this problem is huge. So Oviosu formed a startup called Paga, which would allow Nigerians to make transactions with their phones, among other services. But one of the challenges was to convince a cash-dependent customer that paying with Paga was legitimate. It was very clear to me that for us to reach the mass market, we had to build a network of what we call agents. These are mom and pops, pharmacies, grocery stores, people in the local community that are trusted. The agents provided consumers locations where Paga was supported while offering the agents a commission on transactions. So we had to door to door build out this distribution network 
and we now have 26,000 agents. We have 16 million users on our platform. Last year, we did about $2 billion in transaction values processed on our platform. And Paga's services have evolved quite a bit since it started in 2009. With Paga, you can send money to anyone in Nigeria using their mobile phone number. You can pay any utility bill. You can send money to any bank in Nigeria. Instant real-time credit in the bank account. You can withdraw money from any bank. We've actually leapfrogged some of the things that uh, you know, are not available in the West. Now, there have been other successful mobile payment services on the African continent, like M-Pesa, a Kenyan company with a footprint in parts of East Africa and the Middle East. But Oviosu sees Paga as a platform with potential beyond other mobile payment services. Today already, we allow you to trade and buy stock on our platform. And you could invest in treasury bills and mutual funds, things like that, right? And all of that is from a third-party provider who is leveraging the open APIs that we have, we, have, we have built. And so for us, it's great because we don't want to become an asset manager, but we are happy to partner with asset managers to offer their services uh, on our platform. While Paga will continue investing in local markets, they're planning to expand beyond Nigeria. Mexico is our next market, and it's actually amazingly similar to Nigeria. I feel like the Mexican people are just Nigerians. <laughs> like we're just very, very similar. Family-oriented, the savings collector like I described before, and use cash, same way. This is the 15th largest economy in the world, uh, but 90% of Mexicans don't even save at a formal financial institution. We're also launching um, in Ethiopia, where we actually already have a team of about 60 people. That's a longer runway game. Uh, we're playing the long game there. Ethiopia is the second largest by population country in Africa. So we are making real good headway in terms of solving the problem for payments um, and access to financial services uh, to the mass market.